Hello and welcome to 30 Ad Grant Tips in 30 Minutes. Uh, the presentation about Google Ad Grants that I was going to be giving at the Not For Profit Technology Conference in Baltimore today, which got cancelled, so I'm doing this from home instead. My first tip is to modify the column layout. There are so many useful metrics that are just missing by default in, in the Google Ads screen. Um, you can do this at the account, at the campaign, at the ad groups and the keyword level, and also many other screens. But if you're going to do that, you might need a bigger monitor. Uh, it's a bit like looking at a huge spreadsheet. But if you're working with Google Ads a lot, th th this is one of the best things you'll do. And you can scan all that data at once. You need to maintain high keyword quality scores and I find this even more important in an ad grants account than in a paid account. Um, for one thing your ad grant account is going to appear below paying ads every time and there, there is often a lot of competition out there um, for keywords that, that charities are bidding on. You want your ads to rise to the top and to do that you need to improve your quality scores. The ad grant policies state that you may not have uh, keyword scoring one or two quality score but uh, I think that's putting the bar too low I don't personally allow on my accounts uh, keyword quality scores of three or four I've even got a couple of accounts where I try to weed out the uh, quality scores of five so you want to be aim high you're likely to score nine or ten for for example your own brand terms and probably seven or eight for most of the others this is where it's useful to add these extra columns. Uh, quality score, landing page experience, and ad relevance are not there by default, but you need them. And these are added at, uh, at the keyword level, so when you're viewing that keyword report. You're going to get additional information by adding the landing page experience and ad relevance, and it's going to tell you to some extent why the quality score is uh, what it is. So for example, uh, a quality score keyword um, here of six would be the um, litter picker, for example. And it says the landing page experience is above average. So the page that you're taken to on the website when you click that ad is actually quite good. But the ad relevance is only average. So maybe I need to rewrite the ad a bit. Um, maybe, um, I need to make sure that it uses wor uh, words that are um, identical to a key the keyword, words that are the same on, on the landing page. Maybe they all need to be more identical. But no, I actually know what the problem is here. The thing is that whilst this charity is looking for people interested in going litter picking as an activity, a litter picker is a device. It's something that people want to buy and they're not going to be able to buy it from this website. Uh, they're going to be want to get to go on Amazon and find them. So litter picker as a keyword is actually not that relevant here. So I would weed that one out. As for the others, uh, they're generally pretty high. We're doing okay. Um, whilst you should weed out the really low scoring key keywords that are irrelevant, you might sometimes find that keyword is actually should be doing better. You know it should perform better. And in that case, you should try to improve the ad text or improve the landing page as per what Google is telling you is at fault. Now, you're not allowed to score one or two. Uh, that can actually get your account suspended temporarily. So create an automated rule that's going to pause those low quality score keywords, not remove them because maybe you want to go in and just alter them. Um, to do this, uh, follow the instructions uh, that's in the official live stream by the Ad Grants team. Much quicker to do that than for me to go for the steps with you. Uh, you just make sure this one's daily and emails you to tell you it's done it. You need to stay in compliance, not just um, with Ad Grants policies, but also with some Google Ads policies. Let, let's deal with the um, Ad Grants policies first. There's a very handy dashboard uh, that you can go to and find out what on your account is in or not in compliance. 
And if you get stuck on what any of this means, do go to the um, Ad Grants community forums and ask there because someone will happily explain what this means. To check your compliance with Google Ads policies, you should check the policy manager report. That's up in tools and settings in the Google Ads dashboard. And then you go down to policy manager. Potentially there are just dozens of different policies which you could infringe on. Um, often accidentally, sometimes mistakenly, um, sometimes because you're doing something you shouldn't. In each case, uh, the policy will be listed here and how many ads and how many extensions you have that are disapproved or have limited approval. Now, limited approval means uh, that they are likely to be shown only in some countries. Now, you might be able to guess just from looking at this that this is a health organization and generally health charities find it more difficult to advertise than others when it comes to infringing on policies. Um, some of the issues we're having here is ads related to birth control. They're actually not, that's a mistake. I'll have to phone Google Ads and get those ads approved. Um, related to abortion, again, that's a mistake. It's because this particular charity mentions the word pregnancy a lot. Google Ads is coming to the wrong conclusions, making mistakes. Um, the punctuation policy is possibly my fault. Maybe I put a couple of spaces together or, or use some character I shouldn't have. I can easily fix those. Uh, restricted drug terms and restricted medical content is more difficult to fix. You probably need to get a certification to have healthcare related ads shown in particular countries. Um, there is also a problem if you happen to be an organization that does um, drug and alcohol re rehabilitation, you are unlikely to be able to show your ads at all. And there probably won't be a disapproval even for that. You'll probably just not get any clicks. Um, so we also have ads related to health and personalized advertising. Uh, we have a number of issues. Some of these are fixed by certification, some of them fixed by ringing Google Ads. You should aim to get as high a click-through rate as possible. Click-through rate being a percentage um, of the number of people who are shown your ad compared to those who click on it. So 5% of people are shown an ad and then click on it, that's your click-through rate. Uh, but that's, that's really low a goal. That is the minimum allowed in an ad grants account, um, but don't settle for it. Um, you should be doing double that, 10%, 12%. Uh, I've got one account that manages, I think, 15, 16%. Um, most of them around 10, 11, 12, and a couple around eight. And there is an official live stream by the ad grants team with lots of tips on improving your click-through rate, but I'm gonna give you just a few suggestions now. Firstly, bid on your branded terms. So that's the name of your charity, name of your projects, um, maybe your old name of your charity. Um, and I've known organizations to, to say, well, this is a waste of time. People are gonna Google us, they'll find us anyway, but there are still compelling reasons to do it. One of which is you can completely own the search results page. You can push other organizations down the list. Um, as you can see from this picture here, uh, donorschoose.org, well, they've got an ad at the very top. Then they've got their um, organic search result, um, which below it is showing several site links, which take up quite a lot of space. Over to the right, they have uh, a knowledge panel about them. Um, you might over there see Google My Business results as well. You should aim to own as much of this space as possible. Another good reason to use these branded um, terms as keywords is, it, is you can control your messaging. Uh, you can make sure that rather than Google just deciding how it's going to describe your organization's search results, you can impose it. The first thing people see will be the ad and it can be worded exactly as you want. These ads are also really cheap, so they're, they're not gonna eat into your daily budget much. Um, and of course, possibly the biggest reason is that people who are familiar with you are likelier to convert. And that's one reason 
that some, especially bigger charities, will even bid uh, um, in a paid account, spending real money to get clicks on their brand terms. They know it's cheap. They know it tends to lead to donations. Another way to improve click-through rate is to use keyword insertion. Uh, the example here is uh, this is an ad and in the first headline um, what they've done is they've typed a bracket sign one of those curly squiggly brackets when you do that google ads will pop up some options uh, for how you want this to be capitalized and in this case um, it's going to capitalize every word and the keyword here is puppy adoption well Let's imagine somebody searches the internet and they type in puppy adoption. Uh, that's what's going to appear here. Um, what if they go on the internet and then they search a keyword that's not in the keywords for that particular ad group? It still shows the ad, but that wasn't the exact keyword. Then it will show by default puppy adoption. But let's say they had typed in doggy adoption. Um, and that was one of your keywords, then that will be shown. It tends to raise the click-through rate substantially because it's, it's a psychological thing. You're mirroring people's um, interests. Uh, they have a search intent. You show that right back to them in the ad text. And they're much more likely then to click because they think this is really what they want. One of the best ways to raise your click-through rate is to use extensions. Um, the example here. Um, shows you a number of different types of extensions. I recommend you try all of these. Call out extensions are just simple, short phrases, often one or two words that you can append to any of your ads. So you can do this at the campaign level, um, at the account level, and, and even at ad group level if you really want to micromanage it. So here they've chosen two, um, accredited and Christ-centered. Um, a common things for, for people to put in there are things like their charity registration number um, the name of their organization just in case that isn't actually in the text of the ad um, tax deductible donation the short phrases like that that you think might compel people to click structured snippet extensions the one in purple these are as it suggests more structured they're a list in this case of destinations where the uh, the charity is working like Uganda Rwanda Philippines there are other options you can choose. The one I choose most often is services. So you, you can list the services that the nonprofit provides. Beneath that, in, in blue, we have the site link extensions. Now these have a very useful role. Should somebody not be interested in what you're offering in your ad, Charity for Children in Need, Give Critical Care to Children, Perhaps they would be likely to click on some other topic and perhaps they would be interested uh, to click on a page about child trafficking, education and training and definitely make a donation. I always have a side link extension about making a donation appended to most ads. You are not just giving people options here. You're also giving them information about the scope of your charity. You're saying what else you do, that this is the range of services on offer. So this is informational, it's not just a call for people to click. A couple of other useful ones, location extensions and call extensions. Well, these are great if you want people to turn up at your door or if you want people to phone you. Not everybody, every charity wants people to do that. Some really do. Uh, the location extension is added by connecting your Google Ads account to Google My Business. And for any locally based organization, I absolutely recommend you get a Google My Business account, uh, not just for Google Ads, but to get yourself positioned well in search results generally. But this is my favorite extension type. It's the price extension. Um, add this to any ad, which is a donation ask. Um, I've known these to be shown, I, I checked recently on an account, it was between about 30 and 40% of ads that were shown had these attached to them. Uh, they're great. For one thing, um, they can mirror the donation page on your website. So if you are suggesting on your donation page that people donate $20 for binoculars for rangers, $50 to fund a ranger's work, 
um, $100 uh, for, to provide a training session. Um, then mirror those on your ad text. You're priming people here. Uh, you're making them more likely to convert when they get to the page. You're also increasing the click-through rate. Uh, you're making it more obvious um, what people can expect. They're going to know that you're going to ask for a donation when they get there. But the other thing is uh, just the amount of space this takes up. Now look at the size of this. This extension compared to others is huge. It almost doubles the size of that ad. It makes it much more likely to stand out amongst other ads. And I know that a lot of charities don't even think about using this technique. Right, you probably, when, you, when you're setting your budgets, give each campaign a separate budget and you make sure they total $329 per day, which is the amount that you're supposed to use in an ad grant account. But why do that? You can actually implement a shared budget. Now you'll find that up in the tools and settings and you create a shared budget of 329 and you apply it to all of your campaigns. Um, so much simpler, so much simpler. Um, occasionally there can be reasons not to do this, but for, um, if, there's, if you really want to control which campaigns spend what, but for most users, this is the simplest way. What if you've inherited an ad grants account and perhaps it's not been managed very well? Perhaps it's incredibly bloated. Perhaps the person who used to run it was one of those people who accepts every single suggestion that Google Ads makes about keywords you should add. I've seen accounts with 10,000 10, plus keywords on, but when I've looked carefully at them, I found that only 150 keywords out of those 10,000 had ever had a conversion. Uh, and often you'll find on an account like that, that there are a massive number of keywords just bringing the click-through rate right down. There's a way to weed an account like that. And you, you do it by filtering and sorting. Uh, I tend to choose a 90 day date range because that way I've got enough data to be representative. And what I do is I progressively filter for the worst performing keywords, and not just for keywords. I will sometimes weed an entire ad group, sometimes entire ads, but more usually keywords. Uh, and you do this by identifying the worst. So for example, you find the ads or the keywords that are getting the most impressions, but have a very low conversion rate. And I'm saying go for the ones with the high impressions first, because they're the ones that are bringing your results down more than anything, especially when it comes to click through rate. So find everything on the account with a lot of impressions over 90 days and a very low conversion rate compared to the rest of the account. And I'm not saying to just remove them all. You use your common sense. Um, when you're doing this, you might start to notice that these keywords or ads have things in common. Perhaps the keywords are too generic and irrelevant. Um, and once you've done your first weed, let's say you've got rid of everything that's got a conversion rate under 1% uh, with a lot of impressions. Then you go look at the stuff that's had maybe still quite a few impressions and maybe a slightly higher conversion rate and you remove that. And you don't do all this all at once. You do a weed and you wait a few weeks and you do another weed and you weed this over time. I've done this with accounts and at the end of it, they've been down to 5% their original size in terms of number of ads and keywords. And they, the conversion rate is way up and the click through rate is way up. Uh, you need often far fewer keywords and ads on an ad grants account than you think you need. You should refer to the search terms report regularly to check what uh, what people are actually searching for because your keywords don't tell you that and often you'll be surprised at the just junk searches that are wasting your your budget because every time somebody clicks on that that's, that's a bit of your budget gone uh, you can use a search terms report 
to find new and useful keywords, but you can then also find the useless ones. The useful ones you add to your account, the useless ones, the irrelevant ones, you add them as negative keywords. And from then on, those types of keywords do not trigger uh, people seeing your ads in future. I'll give you a few examples. And these are ones I've seen on a, a real account just recently. Uh, this is a wildlife conservation charity. They have the keyword wolf conservation. Now I, I imagine what kind of um, people you want to come to the website based on that keyword. People interested in save the wolf, protecting wolves, protecting wolf habitat, um, wolf conservation charities. Those are the kind of things you would hope people would be typing in. This was actually a fairly common keyword. Werewolf facts. Now, let that sink in for a moment. How is that possibly relevant to your charity? Um, possibly, if you were the Werewolf Conservation Society, then that would be that would be right on topic. That would be absolutely relevant. But for most organisations, you would be um, consigning that to the negative keywords. So, in this case, I added the word werewolf to the negative keywords, and for good measure, I added wolfman as well. Um, I also later on went and added the word facts to the negative keywords because I found that although a huge number of people were searching for facts on different wildlife, they weren't the ones who donated. They were probably students doing um, essays looking up facts. Um, they weren't really relevant traffic. Here's another keyword. It's on the same account. The keyword is save endangered ducks. Um, this, keyword, uh, this keyword triggered um, um, how to poach a duck egg. Not really what the charity is about. We're not doing recipes. Yeah, this one was a bit worrying. Um, the keyword is endangered pangolins. The search term was where to buy a pangolin. Well, I'm fairly certain this charity is generally anti the trafficking of pangolins. I'd say that's a bit of a problem. We don't want to encourage this. So quite a simple one, this. The charity doesn't have a shop. There's nothing they're selling on the website. So I was quite confident I could use the word buy, B-U-Y, as a negative keyword. So anybody trying to buy anything just will not be seeing our ads. Yeah, so you, you get the idea that context is a huge problem with Google Ads. Don't use broad keywords in the first place. Part of the problem was that we were using keywords where Google could swap in other words. And sometimes if you, you've got a keyword that's actually several different words, Google will pick on two of them and not the other. And that's how you end up with people um, thinking that your website has got recipes about poaching duck eggs. There are a number of ways to write your keywords that will get much more exact results. So there's a keyword type called exact, where only if somebody types in pretty much the exact phrase will they see your ad. Uh, the one that I see used most is broad match modifier. That's where you put a plus symbol in front of each keyword. And that makes it much more likely that um, Google only shows uh, the, your ad to the relevant searches. But what I'll say here, and I haven't got time to explain this um, in, the, in this short session, but it gets a lot more complicated than that. And they've recently changed how this works and your exact keywords are not as exact as they used to be. Um, try broad match modifier and exact um, as much as possible. If you're not getting many impressions on the count, use broad, but keep an eye on your search terms. I highly recommend use dynamic search in an ad grant account. There are various reasons for this. Um, firstly, dynamic search ads are a type of ad that Google writes itself. You only have to um, kind of choose a bit of targeting for it and write two descriptions. It's not like writing full ads. Google will write the rest of the text for you. Google will choose which pages on your website 
to sh to actually use as the final URL for that ad, and it will decide which keywords that people type in trigger the ad. So dynamic ads are the least work way to get a lot of impressions to your account. There's so little effort. That makes them really beneficial when it's a new account or one that's vastly underperforming in terms of spend. Uh, there are some other benefits. They, they tend to get good click-through rate. They tend to get a fairly good conversion rate. Um, the downside of these is they only tend to work for websites that are really well designed, lots of content on them. Um, they also can get off message very quickly. Because Google writes the text, um, and Google doesn't always do the best job of that, you can sometimes add, end up with Google promoting pages on your website you didn't want it to promote and using just, um, headlines that don't represent your organization very well. So use them, but use them carefully. If yours it's a charity that is very concerned about precise branding, uh, be especially careful about using them. Um, but my biggest recommendation would be don't just target all web pages. Um, I mean, that's a valid thing to do, especially in the beginning. But as you move on, you should be trying to target multiple sections of your website and multiple pages in separate dynamic ad groups, each with descriptions that are written to match them. Just to give a few examples here, you could target any page potentially on your website mentioning the words fair trade. Uh, any pages with homeless in the title. You could target all pages on your website that have a particular word in the URL. Now that's really useful when you have, for example, um, the example I've used here, slash publication slash. If your website has a good structure and a hierarchical structure, then that will enable you to, to let Google write ads for anything in that publication section. And the other most useful thing possibly is the category. Um, if Google Ads can understand, and Google generally can understand the structure of your website, it's very likely to suggest categories that you can target. If you don't see categories coming up, that might reflect uh, badly on your website. One of the biggest recommendations I can make is to focus on conversions, not on spend. It honestly does not matter how much of the budget you're using. The actions people take on your website are way more important. So these actions could include somebody uh, filling out a contact form, somebody making a donation, uh, somebody signing up for an event, somebody signing up for your email newsletter, uh, somebody clicking on a telephone number, uh, clicking on an email address. There are so many useful things somebody potentially do. In order to set a conversion tracking up, it gets tricky. It gets tricky fast. Um, now, I, I, I mean, I, I do this all the time, and there are times when I get stuck on this. Um, you have to get uh, your web developer probably online. You've got to get Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, Google Ads sharing data. Your Whoever does your don donation platform, whether that's Classy, Donorbox, whoever, um, they might be able to give you advice on how you track the donations. Um, setting up conversion tracking, even if you don't use a Google Ads professional for anything else, is the one time you might want to get somebody involved to do this for you properly and accurately. And use smart bidding. As soon as you have um, conversions being tracked, you should use um, a bidding strategy other than manual cost per click. Um, manual cost per click just, just doesn't take account of whether uh, somebody clicking on your ad actually goes ahead and does something useful. But a conversion-based uh, bidding strategy does. Uh, this is machine learning. It's going to learn stuff over time. Um, whenever you set up conversions, a conversion strategy on your web, on, on sorry, on your um, Google Ads account, you should expect it to need a month, two months, and after that, even keep improving. Uh, the one that I use most often, the bidding strategy I use most often, is maximize conversions. Um, I pretty much set that up right from the start, right off the bat, as soon as conversion tracking is set up in analytics and then imported into Google Ads or however else you're doing it. 
And the old advice used to be that you had to wait for, um, I think it was 15 conversions in 30 day period before you switch to maximize conversions. That's no longer true. You can now just switch it on immediately. <clears throat> There's one particular strategy that I've enjoyed using recently, and that's maximize conversion value. I don't see many accounts using it. Only do this if you are majorly focused in a particular campaign or across the whole account on getting donations, which probably isn't going to be true of most accounts. But if you've got one of those where you can bring in the donations and not just that, but be tracking them accurately and tracking the values of them so that Google Ads will tell you exactly which ads led to what amount of donations each day. If you're doing that, then switch to maximize conversion value. Uh, what will happen is that Google Ads will focus on trying to get more people like the people who have donated in the past. It will start to see what they've got in common. It'll analyze different signals, where they are, who they are, what demographic, what time of day, what they were searching for, all these different factors. And it will use machine learning to try and bring more of those people. Now that will do that whether you're maximized conversions or maximized conversion value, with the difference is that if it's maximized conversion value, it will focus much more on the ones who bring the most in, making it ideal for donations. But in my experience, only a minority of accounts can really make this work well. And they, they do tend to be the bigger ones getting the donations, often the ones with a lot of brand awareness that brings in donations. When you're tracking your conversions, um, and you're not quite sure if you set them up right, use the real-time view in Google Analytics. Uh, this is so useful. Um, you can click around your own website. You can go and make a small donation. You can um, fill out a form, sign up for a newsletter, and then you can go into real-time view in Analytics and you can see whether it actually happened. In the example I'm showing here, um, I can see that 15 users on the website at the moment, um, one is clicked an email address, one has clicked a telephone address, one has submitted a contact form, and one of them has clicked on a particular link, which was in this case, to visit an NHS website that we really want to send people to. Very important, perhaps more important than anything, to make your landing pages persuasive. There should always be at least one thing, one call to action that you make on each page for, uh, that's going to get people to do something that's practically advantageous for your charity. Ideally more. Um, don't just give people the ability to donate. Let them sign up. Let, let them uh, contact you by telephone. Give them several different methods um, and several other things they can do. And if nothing else, let them click through through a menu and go look at another page if something else might interest them. I, I'm sure this example here. Uh, I rather like the way this website puts uh, the give a regular gift right next to the give a single gift, side by side. Most uh, donation forms um, do one or the other, maybe on separate pages or you switch between them. Here you can compare the two side by side. And I'd like to point out that don uh, the donation asks here have suggested amounts. And again, I'd like to mention using a price extension to reflect those. Also, if you want people to convert, make your website mobile friendly as possible. Uh, you can test that. Uh, use testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com and you can find out how fast your site loads. You can go onto Google Analytics and you can find out what percentage of your users visit from a mobile device, um, a tablet, or from desktop. I recommend every charity does that so you know where your users come from and check out some of the demographic information as well. There's a format for an ad called a responsive search ad. I recommend you absolutely use this. Um, it doesn't tend to perform very well at first. It's machine learning. It performs better over time. Uh, it's not like a normal ad where you have um, three headlines and two descriptions. No, you've got to write a bit more for this. It's 15 headlines and four descriptions. And Google Ads is going to show these randomly. And over time, it's going to figure out which perform better and the ones that the combinations that 
will perform best. It shows those more often. Uh, in terms of time, I find it can take up to three months for these really to start excelling and beating other ads. So you're in it for the long game. OK. Moving a bit away from just Google Ads, try Google Data Studio. If you want to report your stats, particularly if you need to report these um, to the boss, to stakeholders, um, build one of these dashboards. Google Data Studio is quite quick and easy to learn. Uh, a lot of it is pretty much drag and drop. Um, I create one of these reports for each one of the accounts that I manage. And then I don't have to keep sending monthly reports to the clients. They just go and look up the data anytime they want. They can choose their own date range and see how the conversion, see if the stats are improving or not. Yeah, plan ahead a bit. There are lots of different events happen throughout the year. A lot of them related to charities. Um, I'm sure whatever kind of work you do, there's at least one public awareness event that you could tie into. Uh, in this graph here, uh, we're seeing that for the term homeless, there is a, there are particular peaks now, but this is around Christmas time. But when you use Google Trends, what you realize is how early the interest peaks. And I find that a lot of advertisers start their campaigns too late. If you look at the graph, there's often clearly a point that sometimes a month or two earlier than you think where interest in this topic starts growing. So for example, for homelessness, although it peaks around Christmas, it's really from end of October, early November that the interest is sparking. You can't prepare for everything um, exactly, but you can do some kind of guessing ahead. If you're, for example, an emergency aid, a disaster organization, then you could have a shell campaign made. That campaign might have some very basic, slightly generic text, but you are ready to roll that campaign out, complete with site link extensions, uh, call extensions, multiple ad groups, um, dynamic search ads. You keep it paused until it's needed. Right at the last minute, when there's an emergency, in a particular country of a particular kind, you go in there and you edit that ad text and you change the keywords and you launch that live. And I'm sure whatever your organization is, you can imagine a time when you weren't ready to react for something that was in the news. This can get a little contentious. Um, should you have a paid search account too? And this really depends. There are some charities where clearly they haven't got an advertising budget. The Adgon is incredibly useful precisely because it's entirely free and the budget is fairly large. But what you have to remember is that your ad grant account, the ads always appear below paying advertisers. For some charities, this is a big problem. Uh, there are some charities working in some um, areas of work that, and, and the example I gave earlier of um, disaster emergency aid is a very good example. You have very little chance of getting your ad seen in an actual disaster because there are charities out there with huge paid budgets. <coughs> so sometimes you need the paid search to compete. Uh, other reasons to use one are remarketing. Remarketing is where um, in Google Analytics and in YouTube, for example, and, and through other means as well, you collect lists of people who visited your website. Um, then you can show ads only to those people. It's an extremely effective way of advertising. You can't do it in an ad grants account, at least not yet. Um, I, I'm not quite sure if it will be available in the future. Um, and when you do this remarketing, you tend to find the click-through rate, the conversion rates are way higher than with other groups. Um, it's, it's a good way not to waste spend. You can also use other techniques. There are display ads which show pictures um, and text and video on other websites. 
So not your own website, other, other websites, and you can target these in many different ways by um, the type of audience, audience's interest. You could target your ads to appear in certain newspapers, for example. Uh, there are also video ads. If you're doing a lot of video work, it's really worth having a paid account because video ads are cheap. Um, I'm averaging at the moment in several accounts one cent per view of a video. It's, it's a really great way to drive awareness. Watch the official ad grants live streams. There's quite a lot of them. Uh, some in Spanish, some in English. Um, they don't put them up that often, but when they do, they're good. Um, the one on improving your click-through rate is great. Um, there's a very good one on fixing problems you're having with conversion tracking that I recommend. That's on YouTube. They also, on their website, have case studies up of different charities that have used their ad grant and how they used it. Um, well worth looking for inspiration to pick up ideas you just never thought of. If you're looking for somebody to work with, you can partner with um, an ad grant certified agency or freelancer. Um, everyone that on this list has been checked out by the ad grants team. Um, I'm on there. And they have proven a certain standard of work, but also uh, a long experience of working with nonprofits. There's a community forum for ad grants. A lot of nonprofits are completely unaware of this, uh, but please go there. I I'm on there. I try to answer most questions. There is there are some I don't know the answer to. I try to pass on to somebody else. We have a few people who regularly go on there and, and give answers. I would also encourage you, if you are knowledgeable about ad grants or even just a little bit of experience, please do go on there and help answer questions. Sometimes a different opinion, a different perspective would be really welcome. And there are some questions I can, occasionally I can't answer. For example, I have very little knowledge about actually um, setting up ad grants accounts. So I, I fail to answer those ones. Please come on and help. And 10. Well, I was supposed to be giving this um, session, this presentation at their conference, but that didn't happen. They have a digital advertising community forum. Uh, please join. Please discuss. Um, I'm one of the co-organizers for this, volunteer co-organizers. Um, would love to um, get you involved. And finally, please do donate to N10 if you can. They've taken a big hit by cancelling um, the NTC conference. My next session will be about how to structure your ad grant account. Going to be showing you an actual example of a charity called the Ectopic Pregnancy Trust, which has had quite good results over a long time using the ad grant. I'm going to show you how we actually structured it in terms of the campaigns, the ad groups, the ads, the keywords, the sign link extensions, how we chose the bidding strategies and made a few other decisions on it. So, uh, one of the issues I know a lot of charities have when using their ad grant is they've never seen how anybody else does it. So I'm gonna show you.